Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Miles Boothroyd. I teach saxophone at the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point. And today I'm going to be talking to you about this year's required etude for saxophone for the WSMA Honor Band auditions for 2022. As you know, the required etude is the E minor etude from the Voxman book on page 12. And I'll be playing a demonstration of uh, one interpretation of this. But before I do, I want to talk about some of the challenging components of this and things that I think every performer needs to be aware of when they're practicing this etude. The first is the question of tempo. Now, many times when students see Andante as a tempo, we're inclined to think about that as being a slow tempo. But in reality, Andante means walking tempo, which implies some degree of momentum. So if you're looking for a recommended tempo at which to play this etude, I would encourage you to play it at eighth note equals 72. And that sounds like this. And with the metronome from the beginning, it would sound like this. So that's my first piece of advice for you. The second piece of advice is how to practice the turns, the little squiggly lines that you see at a few different places in this uh, etude. Now, if you look at the end of the first line, just before the breath mark, you'll see that they give one of those symbols, and they give you an example at the bottom of the page how to play it rhythmically. Here's what I recommend in your practice. When you get to that measure, and this is, if you count with me from the beginning, measure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you'll see that you have this B natural that's sustained and then that little turn symbol. The first thing you want to do is you want to practice these measures without that extra turn added in so that you can really master the underlying rhythm. To give a demonstration, if I play measure seven without the turn, it would sound like this. In other words, one, two, three, a one. And you want to really master that rhythm so that the underlying framework is very strong. Once you feel comfortable with that, then you can implement the turn by adding in the additional notes, first going up above the note you're starting on, back down, and then below before returning to that original note. And you'll hear that when I play that, that underlying rhythm we practiced is still very clear, and the turn doesn't distort that. The final piece of advice simply has to do with these staccato markings that we see in this piece. Because it is more lyrical and more delicate and more melodic in nature, we want to make sure our staccatos aren't too short. So these are not going to be like your march or your marching band staccatos, but rather something longer and more resonant. If I look at the beginning of the second system, where I have the B natural followed by the ascending E melodic minor scale, I see three staccato marks. Now I want to be careful that I don't play them extremely short. I wouldn't want to do this. Because a staccato mark that short doesn't really represent the kind of lyrical nature of this etude. Instead, here's how I would play those staccatos. And as you can hear, I'm putting just enough space between them to create the um, understanding and impression of separation, but I'm not playing them so short that it takes us out of the character of the piece. So those are my tips and tricks as you work on this. And if you'd like to meet for a lesson to work on this, I'd be happy to talk to you more and give you some input. In the meantime, I invite you to listen to my demonstration of this etude. It's just one example of an interpretation that I think is valid for this beautiful E minor Andante composition. Thank you.